your ball in the trees and then you live out the park. But if you've got a little time, then come and spend it with us. Cause now you're listening to the rough cut. Hello, 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 and welcome down to the Rough Cut Golf Podcast, potentially the 12th best golf podcast in the world. But today we are joined by the very best guest we can possibly have. And I'm not just talking about Jacob oh, to my left hand side. We are talking about Grant, who we've come over to Florida to film with. Um, if you don't know who Mr. Grant Horvath is, we will introduce you. We will talk about this man's remarkable life that he's encapsulated within such a young frame. He's not seen many summers, but those years have been wonderfully full and active. It's quite the treat to be here. Although, what we didn't know as we booked this Airbnb and as Grant pulled in to our beautifully tarmac uh, driveway, that we're actually staying in the roughest place in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was driving back here and I was like, I didn't. I don't think you knew exactly where you selected. No, with it, I honestly, I thought it was perfectly nice. Until you, until Grant came in and told us, I was quite happy here, and now I'm. I mean, looking out windows and wondering what the hell's going on. There was like a five foot iguana trying to get in our house before. Oh, yeah. the wildlife! Well, the wildlife here is yeah, yeah. incredible. But yeah. I, I thought it was just friendly. Little the, did I know it was after meth. Yeah. They're actually invasive. They're, you're supposed to like shoot them. What? Yeah, they're invasive. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Like the iguanas. And it, uh, is it up? For, uh, no, I'm just. I'm. I, I, you don't actually yeah. have to shoot them, but. You're allowed to. You're actually allowed to kill them because they are invasive to Florida. Okay. But um, just a little fun fact. Oh, okay. I did not expect to start this episode <laughs> with the different type of cold-blooded creatures we can chew in Florida. But I suppose uh, this is the thing. That guy who kind of we both watch on uh, Instagram who goes into the Everglades <laughs> searching for the uh, boa constrictors. Yep. Oh, is he the one that like just like sees something? He's like, oh. Like yeah. he's like oh like swamp puppies yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah, that yeah, guy yeah. his name's Garrett I think so he's that guy yeah Garrett is that what Moonlight says <laughs> no yeah no he's the guy that like, grabs the he literally grabs yeah like, just grabs snakes, grabs snakes, snakes and like oh a frog so that's that's <laughs> basically what Florida's like that is what outside our house is like yeah uh, I thought it was a beautiful nature reserve but apparently not um, so <laughs> we are here in Florida we are in near Jupiter let's put it that way um, <laughs> yeah. so we seem less in danger uh, also on today's podcast we're trying out something new Kieran is actually here in the room and he's playing producer he has got an iPad Pro and an iPad Pen, whatever you call it. Apple Pencil. He's, he's making notes, and in the background, you may hear him call out questions. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I do like, I, like, I think eventually when we kind of elevate ourselves to an actual studio setup. Yeah, when we become like professional. Yeah, yeah, we'll get someone behind the glass. Yeah. Like doing all the fancy stuff. I like it, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Um, so if you do hear a, a disembodied voice shout out from the background, it's just Kieran. Don't worry. It's not the locals. It's, it's not <laughs> someone breaking down the front door looking for a fix. It's okay. It's just care. Um, so, first things first, welcome down to the podcast. <laughs> the 12th ranked podcast. The 12th. Yeah, yeah we, we're very proud of that as well. Thank you very much Thank for noticing. Thank you for having me. Um, no, it's, it's absolutely our pleasure. It's amazing how few guests want to come on. I mean, <laughs> if it was number one, I feel like a lot, but 12th, yeah. I can understand. Yeah, yeah, it's surprising, isn't it? Um, but we, <laughs> we are here because we are going to be doing some filming um, with Grant and with Mike and potentially um, Brian Bros as well. Um, you filmed with, was it with George you filmed pretty recently? Yeah, I, I actually, I film with George a lot. Um, yeah, he is one of the best golfers I've played he's with. He's so good. Like, yeah. he's that good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we, me and George are, we've gotten really close. Um, and we have a 2v2 series. So we basically go around. We just filmed with Jonathan Bird, but we have a couple coming up where we have some really good pros, some nice. PGA Tour pros. Um, I'm not going to say them because, you know, <laughs> you know, you never know when it's actually going to happen. But we have some good ones on the radar. But that's that's George and I's series together I is a two v two. But yeah, I mean, awesome. I mean, listen, if you if you ever wanted to give an exclusive. I mean, listen, no, no, no one listens to this podcast anyway. No one's going to know. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Once again. You don't want to jinx it. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Go on, you can, go on, give us a, give us a name. No, I... Go uh, on, go on, Grant. Just wait. one. Jason Day. Oh. Jason Day. And then we got... that. That's on the radar. We don't know if it's going to happen. 
Um, Do, has anyone asked Jason Day yet? <laughs> is, yeah. is, does he know is, about is, it? No, is no, it? I think he does. Okay. I believe so. Um, Joaquin Neiman was in talks. Joaquin Neiman and Carlos Ortiz are down here. Mm. Um, that's that's very exciting. And, and just so you know, I was lying. This is like, I think we're up to about 25,000 listens per episode now. <laughs> that's pretty good. And Jason Day is a massive fan. Oh, well, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> I, I hope this happens, man. So if Jason, you're watching this. Jason, what do you mean if? <laughs> because you're watching this, <laughs> I'm listening on your morning run. Um, Grant's a nice guy. He's going to get it done. You'll, you'll film a fantastic video, though he will beat you. Um, and George kind of, he got through first qualifying corn ferry. I've not actually spoken to him since. Yeah, he, I mean, he just won his Q yeah. school. Mm. Like he has been an, on an absolute tear. Yeah. He's the best golfer in the YouTube space right now. And uh, like hands down, like, cause he could go on the PGA tour right now and I'd be confident that he's going to make the cut and compete. Love that. I think he's that good. Love that. I mean, we're all going to, uh, I think what we're going to do in this episode as well, cause the Ryder Cup's just been on. I'm going to get you to name your top five American golf YouTubers. Okay. I'm going to name top five European golf your YouTubers. Your favorite YouTubers. Uh, yeah, but like y- y- the, the situation we're going to put you in is like we're playing a, a YouTube Ryder Cup. Okay. You're captain. I'm captain. You've got to pick a team from golf influencers Ooh. to take each other on, okay? Oh, don't do that now. They're going to give you some time to percolate that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now you got thinking. the wheels turning. Yeah. 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 So yeah let, so, you really got them turning. So, so let that okay. brain, let that brain turn. That's over a great in the question. I don't know like, who thought of that. They should get a race. It's <laughs> our producer. Kieran. Oh, hey, that was a good one, man. Our, our, our producer, <laughs> our producer <laughs> Kieran Kieran. in the background. That it just, you know, works tirelessly in yeah. the background. He always, Thinking of questions. He's always yeah. there. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Um, Kieran, Kieran, give us a, give us a point of question. What are we going to go for? Oh, How long have I been in YouTube golf? Um, <laughs> Sounds like prison. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been here, buddy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you in here for? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a new in our cell. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, considering that I was in diapers when Peter started YouTube. Wait, whoa. I, uh, I've been whoa. doing it. No, I think. Um, no, I mean, you're what? You're 40. You said 45. What? <laughs> <laughs> And you don't look a day over it, Pete. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> right. Fine. No, you're 37, you told me. Um, but, no, I, I think I've been doing it now for, I've been doing YouTube golf for three years, I believe. It's just about coming up on three years. Um, and even before I got going into it full time, I was doing a lot with Garrett. And even before that, I filmed, like, there's videos on GM golf that are from, like, like four years ago now yeah. where they're hard to watch. Yeah. But it's when Garrett used to come out to Florida, to this area, West Palm. And he had me on a couple of videos when I was still in college and to go back and watch those is the hardest thing ever. I, uh, I hate to break this to you. Yeah. When you've been doing it for 10 years, when you look back at your first video, you're for a rude awakening. Oh. If, you th- if you think it's bad after four years, yeah. after 10 is truly horrific. <laughs> really really shocking but as you mentioned when i started like it wasn't even full hd it was like <laughs> yeah i think 720p was the that highest was the, that was the best no yeah. so you've been now how long have you you've been doing it for how long uh literally 10 years this year 10 years 10 years the so grind, it? when you started i'm just curious because i like was there thumbnails was there um <laughs> was there like no, so when i started the thumbnail was um you upload kind of similar the, the format is still there today so you upload a video and you get an option of um like three like still shots from the from the video yeah. okay oh okay uh, so you, yeah like yeah, yeah i've yeah. seen that yeah and no. you had to you had to select one of those uh but i'm actually quite sure in saying that um kind of we were some of the first people to actually use thumbnails on golf youtube videos really yeah yeah actually take advantage of it because it was almost like a, a function that it was a lot utilized. of people didn't use yeah because people just uploaded and just just I mean, let it we, go. we're still learning about thumbnails and the best way to do it and what's best you know even to this point so let alone 10 years ago when people didn't really have a clue what was going on well we had a and this is david who does a lot uh, does our thumbnails he's going to get very excited about this um because it's just youtube just come up with an update where you can upload three different thumbnails yeah 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 and they'll kind of show those different thumbnails to different audiences so do you upload you do you do that like better. in the youtube studio yeah yeah I can do it in the studio 
Wow. And then Studio will tell you which one's the most popular with the audience. And then you can just select See, that one. Set the one you but I don't for. like that. No? I don't like that. No, because I like, I like the art of grinding the thumbnail out on your own. And then, hey, if it does well, good job. If yeah. it doesn't do well, <laughs> Try you again. learn. Yeah. But like that's kind of like... There's some it's fun like, in that. We yeah. don't need help. Like, it's just, yeah. it's going a little bit too far, I think, but it's well, fine. You know, you, you just settle into your old ways, aren't you? You're such a grumpy old YouTuber now. Yeah, I am. Like, no, I don't like change. No, I, I don't want... I want it to stay the same. AI is what I don't want. Mm. I don't want AI coming in. It's here. Yeah, it's here. But that's that's kind of, when I hear AI, I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. You won't like the fact then, I hate, I hate to break this down. Uh, our podcast is now edited by an AI software. That is not true. It is. That so, is true. So what is we'll, it actually that true? Is true. Yeah. So what we'll do when we when we finish this podcast, we'll we've probably got time to upload it just to show kind of Grant what it actually does. Maybe take a screen recording as well. It is so cool. It basically you can you can attach a camera angle to a voice. So let's say this front camera angle attach this to me. Then when you start talking, oh, it cuts. So it, yeah, I got you. So you don't have to use like the switcher or anything. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, yeah, and then that's when, crazy. And then when Jacob says something absolutely stunning, which happens every podcast, so okay. So that takes away <laughs> someone's job, though, <laughs> essentially. Uh, yeah, it, but you have to put it in manually. So <laughs> for now, for now, um, yeah. it does. But also, it saves so much time. Okay, it saves so much time. That see, that's where I see like it could be a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So it's it's. It, there are definite advantages. I mean, obviously, eventually, uh, when AI takes over and wipes out the human race, then we'll look back and say, ah, that's where it started. That's when we should have yeah. known. That's where it started to go wrong. When they started editing our podcast, yeah, that's yeah. when we should have <laughs> that's, <laughs> intervened. That's the point where we should have gone, something's not right here. Mm. Yeah, like, I've true. got a bad feeling about this. Can you remember the time... Grant was right. Coming back to like <laughs> you starting off in YouTube, can you remember, Pete, when you were... Uh, having to edit everything and do it all by yourself and, and without me and Kieran and Mick and David here. Yeah, it was great. Do you miss that? Yeah, it was great. You do? Times are so simpler. Really? Yeah, but... <laughs> no, I don't miss it. Um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was literally editing everything on the iPad. Oh, really? So you yeah, want... Yeah. Oh, okay. Honestly, like, the old days of YouTube were great. Mm. In, in a very, like, while nobody because knew what they were doing be, kind of way. it could be kind of just old school and rough and ready around the edges where now it's just kind of like this professional product is expected that you need to be you need to be on your game yeah but bear in mind this was like in the days of uh, coaching videos and that's what you did right yeah yeah coaching and videos can still do good though hey they're still there like they're still they'll always be there yeah um, yeah everyone's I mean, gonna slice it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly everyone yeah. is always gonna struggle they're always that. gonna google yeah. how yeah. to fix my slice you yeah. just gotta be the top top video yeah and, there you go. well i think what we said i don't know if you've kind of found this grant because your channel has been growing really quickly it's absolutely smashing it and there seems to be like a whole new audience of young american golfers yeah actually tune into youtube I, what have you actually found you know your kind of fan base is just getting so big now yeah i mean i would say it's funny when you talk about age because the demographic on my channel is actually 25 to 34 is the main mm. so that's the main age but yeah so i will say i think um the younger audiences which i think is what we've captured and it, it being in good good and now on my own like that is what has been captured harder than absolute anything yeah is the younger audience because yeah. like every i feel like every junior golfer knows of us which is pretty mm. cool and i feel like um you know it's become cool to watch youtube golf yeah i feel like it probably wasn't like that a while back but yeah. now it's it's transitioned it's pretty cool now mm. yeah it's cool to watch youtube golf i didn't ever think we'd be in a position like that pete you're cool whether you whether you want to believe it and or not, I think it's just like I think it's just the beginning. Like I don't yeah. think oh, I don't think YouTube start. golf is like, like I I truly believe it's going to be so powerful. We haven't even tapped into it. Mm. It's it is strange. Like when you look at obviously you kind of mentioned good good got yourself got Micah got the Brian Bros um, got this whole kind of contingent of American creators. Then you've got everyone kind of UK based. There's more European guys kind of coming into it now as well. If you actually have a look at the the views and the numbers and everything that goes on every single kind of week within the golf YouTube space, it's absolutely massive. It was weird, like the the figures for um, 
Sky Sports, which is the UK's main broadcaster, and quite a few um, kind of other people tap into it now because the broadcast is good, of the Ryder Cup that was last week, uh, their viewership for the final day on the Sunday was, I think it was 2.7 million. Right. Which, when you compare that to actual YouTube numbers, is very small. Mm. Right. Over the course of a week. So it's interesting to see the, how the transition from if you just if you wanted to watch golf your only real option was to watch golf on tv yeah professional tournament golf and now it's it's completely different yeah i think like golf channel and stuff like that like it just i feel like it used to be real i don't personally watch like golf much at all like on tv i watch a little bit of the highlights i watch the Ryder cup the majors but not like I used to. Mm. And I don't watch a ton of YouTube golf either, but it's definitely, it's just like this whole community now and it's definitely different. Yeah. But I just feel like, maybe I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong, but I just feel like it's become, YouTube golf is kind of, it's becoming super powerful and it's maybe overtaking a little bit of like televised coverage. I mean, yeah. you're always going to have, I'm not saying like the PJ Tour. I'm not saying PJ Tour or any of that. That's always going to, those, those are the best players in the world that will always be like, but I'm saying, say like there's a show that comes out on the Golf Channel. It's going to be hard for them to compete with YouTube Golf, mm. like a big break. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then, oh, sorry, come on. No, no, you good. You good? And I just want to say it's like, and it, it kind of sounds a little bit like self congratulatory. This, but like, <laughs> obviously we're, we're not just here to blow smoke up our own ass. It's, it's it's kind of an interesting kind of dynamic of where people are watching golf and what they're interested in. And I, I do kind of want to speak to a lot more of like you guys over here to understand a little bit more about what's going on because you know there's nothing better than actually speaking to someone in person and getting to understand kind of what they're what they're doing what they're going through i mean from where you kind of started to where you are now i mean have you got any idea about where you want to take your channel and kind of what you're doing because i know from what you've spoken about in previous podcasts because you know you know we're cyber stalking you a little bit well i say me it was mostly kira um, Thank you. He's doing a good job of producer, though. So, yeah. he's always, well, this is his it. job as a producer. Background research. Yeah, yeah. He I has to cyberstalk, and that's basically his job. Um, <laughs> Look at him with his pencil. And about how you're obviously not interested in playing. Um, you're not interested in like, doing PJ Tour route or anything like that. Obviously, playing a few tournaments, which is great. So, what's your actual kind of idea? What are you thinking about your channel where it could go? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have. I have some big goals with it. Um, I don't think I've actually shared this yet. Here's um, you and Jason Day. Which no, this is just something that I'm I'm definitely like it's coming out on the next video, which is a Bryson DeChambeau one v one, which we're posting I think tomorrow. Um but I, I'm starting up a teaching channel, which is like that's my true passion. I uh I did good good labs and that's where I love doing those videos. I thought mm. that was so fun and I wanna have I'm starting up a secondary channel called Grant Horvat Teaches and Essentially, it's just a channel where I can post a bunch of stuff and not worry about it because I love thumbnails. Yep. I like, that's like, I, I, I love doing them. <laughs> and I can, I definitely have creative ideas for every, like creative ideas for the thumbnail for all the teaching videos. So I want to just have a channel where I just throw up tons of content and don't care how it does and maybe look back a couple months later and one could have gone crazy, one could have flopped. Like, I just want it to be a channel where, you know, we're just throwing up a bunch of really interesting content. So I love teaching, but for the main channel, that's just a side note for the main channel. I definitely have some, some pretty big goals and some pretty, I have some ideas on which direction I need to take it. Um, because I do feel like YouTube golf could get stale and mm. someone's always got to be, um, you know, moving the needle mm. and there's definitely steps you got to take and make sure you're pulling off yeah. the next big collab and getting the pros on there. And, um, so yeah, we have some good stuff planned, but I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And we're kind of right now, uh, we've got it down. We'd, we've got down like our niche and we just got to keep, keep rolling with it. Yeah. No, I love that. And yet, I mean, we kind of spoke about it before about coaching videos. I mean, they are something which are never going to go out of fashion in respects that people are always going to want to help with the games. Um, and your teaching videos, like, sorry to interrupt, but your mm. teaching videos, definitely like probably old ones are still like. If you go back in your studio and you look, I, I guarantee your old, like 
a teaching video could just spike out of nowhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. just be like, why is this getting yeah. 20,000 views in the last 48 hours? Yeah, I mean, we, we see it all the time. And that's why, like, last year we, we did the same. We started our own coaching channel just because it's it deserves its own, own space. space. Yeah. yeah, it deserves its own place. It is something which is important. And like I said, it is something, you know, I stopped coaching kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions how was it three years ago now when you guys came on? Uh, it well, I, I it, in February next year it'll be four years that I've been here. So wow! I'm so you're are you PGA certified? Uh, yeah, yeah. So oh, PGA awesome. Pro. But that's the thing. Like when when I started, that was almost like a, a prerequisite. It's almost pretty much everyone who made YouTube videos was a pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A PGA pro who then turned their hand to YouTube. Right. Whereas now it's starting to become a bit more. It is a little like YouTube and like the internet should be. It's open to everybody. And with instruction, it's funny because like there is no, like there's no one that can really hold you accountable other than the comments of other pros. Like mm -hmm. you can go give any instruction you want. You're, you're posting it on the internet. You just have to know that the instruction you're giving has the potential to be critiqued by yeah. people. And like, um, that's amazing that obviously you're PGA certified cause I'm not, but my dad is a PGA pro and I definitely like, there are successful like George Gankis. Like there's a lot of smart teaching pros out mm. there that never went through it. Um, and I felt like personally, my dad was like, don't waste your time doing it. Like you've learned basically everything from me. Yeah. I've taught you. I'm PGA certified. And he always told me like, don't waste your time doing it. Yeah. Well, I well I'm not saying it, that's not anything against PGA pros. I think it's wonderful to go get it. Like if there's someone watching this and they're going to get their, certificate go do it like it's it's not a bad thing i no. want to do it i think i think people can still benefit from doing the pga but i mean i'm i'm kind of like the same situation now where i kind of do think that if you want to be if you want to be a good coach and that's what you're really interested in mm -hmm. you don't have to be a pj pro to do that like right. all the information that you could possibly need to get a really good start is available at the touch of a button there. That's true. Like you don't need to go to a school to learn that stuff. You can learn that off the internet. The only advantage that you have being within a PGA or being within a golf club environment is that you can directly learn from how a more experienced, good coach actually applies that. that that's the that's the secret, really. You can have all the knowledge in your world, but it's, it's how you actually interpret a swing, ball flight, everything else, and then correct that person right 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 you know because when we do a coaching video we're very reliant on the person watching understanding what they're doing wrong and how to apply the fix right right um you know actually one-on-one -on -one coaching is a is a different skill and it's something i something i do miss actually but like the, the swing quest channel is a, a little outlet for that yeah definitely i've seen it yeah i've seen your whole teaching channel that's awesome Thank you. Well, it's one of the YouTube channels you watch, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's well, the it's very like few that you watch. Notifications turned on. Yeah, there you I, go. Like, run down to the yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Like you actually broke your computer when you hit that bell icon. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll trip, like I'm running to go watch it, mm. and I like fall over and <laughs> exactly. start like, crawling to try and get to the TV. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, if you're not subscribed to Rough Cut Golf Podcast yeah. YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you've not checked out Grant's <laughs> channels, we will link them in the description below. I'm sure you have, and if you haven't, shame on you. Producer Kieran, hit us with the next talking point. Uh, the next talking point, obviously, you know, you were talking about the, you know, your love of like, YouTube golf at the moment. What's been your favourite video you produced this year? Oh, gosh. Yeah, obviously, you produce a lot, and you've got some good views on, like, loads, loads of stuff. But, like, what's your favourite? And why, why are you having to think about that, Kieran? I'm loving this role. <laughs> we, we, we yeah, you're, you're asking some great questions. What's my favorite? I mean, I know my favorite of all time. I would say, like, it's hard for me to think exactly what's my favorite at the moment. I'd have just to like this, look through. Just like this year. Like, like, is that based yes. on is that based on views or is that based on just like my enjoyment? Yeah, just yeah, just your enjoyment. Your enjoyment. And I'll probably throw it over to Pete as well. What's been my favorite? Yeah, Pete, answer that quick. Let me let me look. Wait, wait. I want to I want to come up with a good. Maybe let's go through. Um, I want to look. So, to be honest, I I think even though it's not done particularly well view wise, the went with PJ Pro Am is a video I love to do. Yeah, every that, single that is year. Super fun. It's it's such a good day. Um, I think probably one of our best this year because it was so different was probably Comporter. So playing a 
playing the course that no one's ever played before, uh, being out there on our own, this stunning new golf course. Yeah, I think that was that was different, and it was something which was pretty unique. And, th and that's I think what everybody's trying to do on YouTube now. They're trying to find video ideas that are new, they're unique, and they're entertaining, and that can be kind of become a bit of a series and can be replicated. It's, it's difficult because. You know, there's a lot of channels out there now. Oh yeah, it's very difficult. Um, yeah, it's like the break, break seventy, break sixty, break. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. just so many, and mm. they're great. Though. I mean, I think they're awesome. I uh, but I just looked at my channel, so I didn't even think of it. But there's an obvious one that's way out there, and then I have a second one I want to talk about. Okay, but the uh, like my favorite one that we produced was the YouTube Championship. Um, that's my mm. my biggest video on my channel, yeah. and I remember sitting down with Skyler, uh, my videographer, and thinking of that idea, actually. I was like, what do people want to see in YouTube? They like stroke play. They like serious 18-hole stroke play. Let's get everyone together, and then let's make it even better with Bob and Joey commentating. Yeah. This. So now let's bring everyone together and have Bob and Joey commentate. Trust me, this is going to be our biggest video ever. Yep. It happened. We made it happen, and now, obviously, the sequence of this whole YouTube championship is everyone gets theirs. So Mike has done his now. We're actually heading to Bermuda to go film the Brian Bros YouTube Championship. So there's seven of us, Wesley um, and everyone. Or it's actually six of us. Um, but yeah, so that was my favorite. Um, it was two hour, two hour and a half long mm. video. It was crazy, but it was an awesome video. And then my... What did you say? It's on 2.3 million views. As well. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it, that helps. Yeah, that, that <laughs> yeah. definitely helps. Um, but it truly was enjoyable. Um, yeah. I, and then my other one that was really enjoyable was the, my dream came true and I surprised my best friend at the kingdom with a set of clubs, oh, nice. um, Henry, that. uh, that was awesome. Like it was a genuine reaction and it was like a real video where I surprised him and mm. like, we kept it a secret and he shows up to the kingdom. We're like, and it was so funny because yeah, so driving cool. up to the kingdom, he was saying in the car to me, like, man, it'd be so cool to be fit <laughs> at the kingdom. And I like, I was like, yeah, I know, man. Like, wouldn't that be sweet? Just, a, <laughs> just imagine. Yeah. And then like we pulled up and we opened the doors. And I'm like, you're getting fit today. And then it, he walked in and Trotty's there to greet him. Love sure. that. So that was an awesome video. But those are my two favorite this year. Yeah, yeah for sure. It, it's a hell of a, hell of a place as well. If you've not, um, if you've not checked out that video from Grant and, there's quite a few kind of videos out there showing off the kingdom. It's a it's a fantastic place. Yeah, it really, really is. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get there early next year. So you need to go out there. It is yeah, yeah. wonderful. Kieran, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, Kieran. It's, it's like you're about to say something. Sorry, mate. I didn't mean to just look at you. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. We're, we're just we're working out the new producer role. Um, it's it's difficult. Like it was on a roll. You are doing good. It was doing so well. Now it's. Uh, I think well now we can. I think it's a, a good time to sort of move into the uh, the Europe versus USA. Love YouTube. this. Love this. Yeah. So, um, wow. So. Yeah. If you've been, hopefully you've been figuring out. So I'm going to set the scene. Okay. I'm going to set the scene. Okay. So, so this is a clip. This is a let's this, clip this. this right. is it. So we're going to set the scene. <laughs> so <laughs> clip it. Clip it. Where, where where should we go? Should we go Europe or US? Uh, let's go. Let's go US because we just had. Okay, okay. So imagine the scene, okay? Okay. We're in New York, right? Okay. We're at Liberty National. Okay. Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. It's there in the background, but there's a strong fog rolling in off the sea, so you can just see the arm poking up, basically. Okay. The light of Liberty, the flame is up there, okay? It's okay. glittering in the, in the early morning sunrise. The fog just begins to part, and a big ferry starts to move in and stood at the front of that ferry, very Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, uh -huh. is me, captain of the European team, okay, ready to come back to the shores of New York <laughs> and reclaim the land that was once ours. Okay. Okay, this is where we're at. Okay. We're ready. I got and it. I'm going to be bringing five of the finest golfers that European YouTubers produce <laughs> 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 and waiting for us on that shore is you okay. behind you cloaked in a wreath of golfing excellence are your five players who are you going to pick that's the question oh man 
So is this is this based off a of just skill or is this based off of like so? Because I a skill is like you know the yeah like there's very fine line. So yeah. is it skill or is it five people that? So I think I mean the the choice is literally yours. These are five captains picks. There's been no qualifying events for this. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the one rule, the one stipulation I'm going to add is that you cannot have Bryson DeChambeau because okay. he is not a YouTube golfer. Bryson, God, I love you, <laughs> but you ain't a YouTube golfer, bro. I don't think, right. and Wesley Bryan. Uh, yeah, okay. He's yeah, too good. He's, he's actually, actually too good. good. He's an actual joke, isn't he? So, yeah, okay. putting, he's way too good. Yeah. So those guys can be your vice captains, but they can't play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with number one. I'm going to pick George. Yeah. Um, I, as a YouTube golfer, he's the best YouTube golfer. I don't think anyone, like, yeah, you have you have your, you know, Luke Kwan, you have Brad Dalkey, Ben Hatton, mm. which are have all come into the space. Um, not Luke. Luke's been doing it for a while, but obviously Ben and, and Brad. and There's a lot of, like, really, really good players. Um, but I feel like George is just, like, he's insane right now. I've said yeah. that a lot. So George is going to be nine, my number one pick. Um, number two. I would pick Garrett. Yeah. Um, I think Garrett and I's 2v2 series, we were literally like almost undefeated. It was kind of crazy. We lost to John Daly Jr. That was about it. <laughs> and his friend. Um, so Garrett and I like about And Garrett's short game's unbelievable. Can hit it a mile. Um, George, Garrett, and I'm going to go with... Um, whoa, what was that? <laughs> um, Someone's come pick up there. Uh... I'm then, I'm then going to take Micah. <laughs> Because Mike is just, he's a solid golfer, but his power mm. driving the golf ball is mm. unbelievable. I think Micah would, yeah, he crushes it. We would need his drives. Um, and I, I think he's obviously a really good competitor as well. So George, Garrett, Micah. Um, wow. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. This is tricky. I mean, I, I could throw a few in the. Just while you get a little bit of time. So you pick three of that. I pick three. Yeah, you go for three now, Pete. And okay. Then we can... So if I go for three. Yeah. Let me think. I, I would have to say, and this might be slightly controversial, that yet again, just like the real Ryder Cup, I would say that the American YouTube Ryder Cup team would probably be stronger on paper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they've got some good players over here. Yeah, we really do. Yeah, you... Yeah. I think we do. But um, I'm just, trying to... But just like the real Ryder Cup, what does that matter? <laughs> because all that matters is when you're on the golf course and you're facing your opponent eye to eye. Like, that's all that matters, isn't it? So I think first up, for a variety of reasons, I'm going to go with Matt Fryer, just because he's a very good golfer, but also he's a psychopath. Yeah. So if he's out first... And he gets in a full-on Rory McIlroy mood. I don't think anyone's going to stand in his way. Okay. I think he's just going to move him out of his path. I don't think anyone would want to stand in his he's way. He's a really good golfer. Yeah, he's very, very good. Yeah. If he can keep his head, he's fantastic. Okay. Like he was, I think he was like plus four or something like that when he when he turned pro. But he, he was his, his his putting is also very his, good. His, his putting is unreal. Yeah. He's, he's like wedges in his putting, and he's just very, very consistent, very straight. So I think he'd be leading off. Second up, do I want someone steady <laughs> compared to someone who's really good? And what, what are you looking for here? Uh, I'm I'm just thinking, like leading off those first two matches. I just want someone who's going to be very steady, very dependable, and also can get in the head. Shall we go, Jimmy Bullard? Jimmy Bullard. <laughs> Let's go, Jimmy Bullard. Going off second now. <laughs> He is, Have you ever heard of Jimmy Bullard? I, I've heard that name. He's a uh, part of golf life, like Tubes and Ange. Um, yeah, well, I think it, I've it, heard that. He so used he, to be a professional footballer. Tubes. Okay. And he, he, I mean, he's very good. He's very, very good. I'll give you that. That's not the way I thought you were going to go, though. No, no. I mean, he's, he's but not. But he's competitive. He's very competitive. Yeah. Very. And that's what I'm looking for. You know, we're going over to New York. The home crowds, they're going to be feisty. He's a good golfer. He's a good, he's a very steady, decent golfer. Yeah. Okay, so you got Matt Fryer, Plays Jimmy Bullard. Hmm? Plays off one. Plays off one. Okay. 
but on you know in a match play situation, we've already discovered that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He shot under par around Marco Sononi the other day. Yeah, he smashed it. So, so there you go. It's got to be a decent golf. Got so, pulled off for lightning. Got pulled off for lightning. He was causing lightning. <laughs> That's incredible. Mother Nature, Mother Nature stopped him from going deep at Marco Simone. That is a fantastic fact. Um, I think third up, hmm, just because I think he'd be good in the dressing room, we'll go Andy Carter. Okay. And also because Kieran, and never forgive me, Kieran <laughs> loves Andy Carter. Hey, like, Kieran, it's okay, man. I, I, I still like you. <laughs> like I I honestly think that every time Kieran meets Andy under his breath he's just asking him to adopt he's yeah. just like come on just take me in Andy you'll be okay <laughs> take me on the wing so I'll go for those three guys first okay. pretty steady I mean Carter can't put but hopefully he'll be hitting it close enough for the dumb manner yeah, yeah that's what I'm going for okay that's your first three that's the first three so I've gone so my let's go over this quick I've gone George, Garrett, Micah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to go with Fat Perez. Um, okay. Bad choice. I, I, no, <laughs> we need someone to bring the morale. And if FP shows up, we're going to have Bob and Joey <laughs> cheering yeah. them on. So that right there, just did, I mean, just Bob, Joey, and FP together. Uh, I mean, the morale is going to be so high. It's like we're going to be, we're going to be rolling. So yeah. I would go with FP number four. Okay. And then five, if I can't choose Wesley, I'm going to go with Luke Kwan. Hmm. Luke Kwan's really good. He's really, really solid at golf. I mean, just an insane golfer. Yeah. 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 I mean, he, um, I've, I played with Luke before and he's, he's very, very good. Very good. So, very I mean, you golfer. can't not. Like, he's just, he's too good at golf. Uh, listen, yeah, we, Eventually we'll get around and we'll we'll play with Bob to Sports and probably have a one to one with Fat Perez. Uh -huh. And I love him as a guy. Yeah. But in your team, I think it's just gonna be too much chaos. You're gonna be having too much fun. <laughs> You're gonna take your eyes off the ball. No. And that's where you are gonna be like, let's take this. No, seriously. we need to be free. We need to feel free. We need to be Yeah, us five together, I feel like that'd be I think you're gonna be too free. <laughs> you need some structure. You know, you need some discipline. I mean, what, what? I mean, those guys are going to come in. They're going to be all right. Okay, we'll do this Friday Cup. But you know what? Be fun. You should have a shot of vodka every all. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll be like, well, you know, okay, you guys go for it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to swoop in. We're going to swoop in and take it from you. Um, so I think I need a bit of. I think I need a bit of firepower here. I need someone kind of explosive. You've already picked mm, Matt. For, <laughs> <laughs> not not emotionally, <laughs> okay. like from a from a golf standpoint. Okay. They swing it fast. <laughs> Who else could we have in there? So he's got so many kind of good YouTubers over there, but like yeah, the American team golf wise is very very strong. Yeah. Hmm. And there's some like this would be actually insane guys. to actually happen. Yeah, like, oh, this to would be so happen. good. Is there uh, any like underappreciated guys or some like smaller guys that you can think of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, the thing is, like, there's, I mean, for example, could bring my boy Lewis Sparrow along for yeah. a start. Should we get Lewis in? I think so. Do, do you think Lewis would just like amaze them with his golf? Swing? Yeah, Grant. If you have you like, again, you might not have that. You will show you a swing after. It's so pure. Really? Like, I know, I know your swing is appreciated on the YouTube scene, but this guy's swing is. What's nice. his name? Lewis Sparrow. So okay, no he's, you, you probably would have seen one of his swings on. I've probably seen his swing. Yeah, you, you'd have seen his swing on Instagram or hanging in the Louvre, something like that. <laughs> but it is, you know, it, it, it's actually, it's, nice. it's unfair. Yeah, it's a good yeah. move. It's annoying. Have you played golf with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really good. Uh, we did a scramble together. It was going very well. And then it wasn't. Um, then we had a sausage roll at then we had halfway. A, we had a, oh, those are the best sausage it, rolls. It, it, oh. yeah, it killed the momentum. <laughs> um, so, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll stick Lewis in there just so he can, like, amaze everyone with this one. Okay. Can I'll I can that. I recommend someone who I think is a really good golfer? That Go on, might, Frederick Lind Lindblom. Well, he's Swedish. That's the thing. So... Is he, does he do YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind okay. of. Kind of. So that's the thing. It's a bit of a loose one. Yeah. I feel like they do, they do, Instagram. They do mm. have a channel, but... Yeah, they, they're not really uploading too much at the moment. We did film a YouTube video with them the other day for their channel, so... It's true. 
Yeah, so I go, so go Fred. We can go. Obviously, we can stick Rick in there as well. But you know, it depends which Rick turns up. No, Rick. Rick surprised me. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, <laughs> he had a couple of g- really good days. Yeah. I would not that, sleep on Rick. That's yeah. the thing. So if Rick turns up and he has a good day and the confidence gets flowing, like great. Yeah, like we can have a really good match. If he turns up and thins his first chip. <laughs> that's it it's done like it's done it's over no yeah he's he's been playing really good golf he's mm. been playing good so I would I think it's with Rick as well like because he's loaded like he could probably bribe <laughs> some, some match officials <laughs> okay I like it so hmm, it's tricky do we get someone who could potentially bribe everyone have a good day <laughs> or friend <laughs> who's just like a really solid golfer I reckon bribery <laughs> you know what yeah I'm not I'm not going to play fair Okay, so we're going to get Rick in there and we're going to get him to slip a few wedges. Okay. That's what, we'll get Rick in and we'll get him to take Fat Perez out on one of the nights, <laughs> get Fat Perez to bring the rest of the boys out. So when you turn up in the morning, like, where is everybody? They're just going to be like, you, you'll look over the course and they'll be in bunkers, they'll be asleep on the green and Rick will just be there just like... <laughs> sticking them off. Just like... Done Thanks. it. Done it. Everybody is <laughs> okay. out of there. And I'll be like, well, that, guess okay, that's a win. That. Guess that's a win. Um, uh, with that, guys, make sure you uh, get down to those comments and let us know what your two teams would be as well. I think it is strange, isn't it? Because now we're, we're, it's in a position where literally we spoke about this, but even, what, three years ago, maybe? Mm. Like the choices would have been very obvious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many out there now. So many. It's cool. And so many, so many people doing such good stuff as well. Like it's the yeah, the YouTube space is crazy at the minute. Um, the, I I think those teams were pretty solid. I I, I have an opinion on which way I think it would go, but I'll, I I'll mean, refrain from from if it, deciding on that right now. I don't think anyone's beaten George. That's or the thing. I don't yeah. think anyone's beaten Quan. Is like with, with I George, think Quan and George are yeah as a partnership if, if, that yeah, would be so like, good. That's. You're almost up at with, tour level. With George, so we, we filmed with him, was it last year at um, St. Anne's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he was good. Like, he, you could tell he, he got into a rhythm where he, I think he was working on something in his swing and he found it. And then on the back nine when we were playing, he he was really good. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's like this year of the beast thing. That's the th- so it's yeah. not like the normal, it may be George back then. I never, I just gotten close with George in the last, like, year or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't play with George way back, yeah. but. All I can tell you is what I see right now. <laughs> that's, the, that's what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. in the, um, and obviously he might have been close to what he is now at the time. But thinking of how much better you have to, you know, there's so many good golfers out there. But how good you have to be to get onto the PGA Tour and even be winning Q School. The jump that he's made in that space of time is quite incredible. Really, yeah, he's going to be the first YouTube golfer, golfer just to, to do it. Oh yeah, he's going to be playing that's so events. good. I think what, what I saw with. So what I saw with George when kind of we played with him, um, obviously, you know, going to have to say beat him on the front line. <laughs> Just saying, you know, ball struck. No, you're a pretty good golfer. Ball struck him to death. I'm, the, I'm really not. Um, but I had a well, good, what's your, what's your I, handicap? I had a good nine holes. My handicap. What would um, you say is like? Terrible putting. Okay. <laughs> your handicap. Yeah, that's that's my main one. Uh, closely <laughs> followed by chipping, uh, <sighs> iron play. And inaccurate driving. So apart from that, <laughs> I'm pretty solid. Mm. Why is every, <laughs> why is every you like between me? Let's just like me, you, and Rick. Let's just take those three. Or putting. It's just like <laughs> we're all like, I'm well at least Rick and I are clawing it. And you don't find the claw through good putting. Mm. No, no. It, you you find it through an act of not exactly desperation, <laughs> but. You, you kind of. I don't think anyone naturally grips a putter with the claw. Yeah, I, I think what happens is you fall down the kind of stairs of putting. You just reach out, grab the banister, and the grip you have hold on is the, the claw. Yeah, I think it goes like so. It goes like traditional grip, mm-hmm. and it goes like cross-handed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I, from, I think those two are pretty close because like sometimes it can work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes like traditional cross-handed, and then some concoction of like a praying grip. Mm-hmm. So now you're like you're you're changing this yeah. two, two thumb grip, and then I think a little bit down, man, it could even be a little further. You find the claw, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's down there, so it's on the, and then like obviously even from there's like arm lock, yeah, arm lock, yeah, and then a little broom bit handle. more is broom, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just descends out. And there used to be like an offshoot as far as like belly putters go. Yeah. Uh, but they'd be banned now, so you can't go to that. Um, I've literally forgotten what we're talking about. What we're chatting about? Uh... We were talking about you being not very good at golf. Oh, yeah, I'm not very good at golf. Yeah, yeah, we can talk no, about that. We're talking, no, about, we're talking about George. Oh, like, yeah, do you George, usually yeah, shoot yeah. around? I want to know, do you usually shoot around like even? Um, like- yeah, ish. Well, I'm, I'm not a... I very rarely go very high, but I very rarely go very low. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like relatively solid. You're in that like 69 to 74 range. 75 76 76. (laughs) i mean i will i will go out and i'm a classic i'm a i will go out and if i get to let's say four under par my brain will just explode and try desperately to make sure i get back to about level (laughs) where i feel comfortable i don't want to feel uncomfortable Mm. four under par i don't belong there i've never what, what am i doing down there i don't i don't deserve it and then all, all these thoughts all go through my head then. And then, yeah, it just, it, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm not on tour. Um, but I think with, I think with George, what I found and like when I spoke to him earlier this year, he's, he's almost relaxed now. Mm-hmm. Cause like the, he's been focusing more on like YouTube stuff and social side stuff. And what's kind of happened is cause he's relaxed and he doesn't, not that he doesn't care, but it's a lot more relaxed about that thing. He's letting his natural yeah. talent and just, just his ability to just like actually shine through. And I feel like maybe back when he was coming out of college, which he was really good in college, which people, a lot of people don't know how good mm. George was in college, um, like four to three time all American or something. Yeah. Um, he comes out and there's obviously that degree of pressure. So I feel like, you know, you're, you're just younger and you feel all that pressure and like, all those expectations and now since all that has passed he's maybe reached the point where it's like hey you know just play golf i got i got a kid i got a wife yeah you know let's just just let it go yeah let's just just let it see what happens it's interesting because like it is something that i know i know you'll have this a lot and and we get it quite a lot in our videos is oh you know why oh you're really good at golf like why don't you drive at all why don't you play at all all the rest of it and the pressure of playing youtube golf is a lot different than playing in tournament golf. It's which way is, harder. Which is why it's so hard to kind of make that transition because it's a completely different sport. The YouTube tour is hard to make. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of think you just need a camera. You need a camera and a candy attitude and you can make it, kids. And you've got one of them. You can do it, kids. <laughs> and it's not the candy attitude. No, but I have, I have multiple cameras. That's true. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. it just makes up for... Multiple... Uh, ev- Every bad part of your game, if you buy a new camera, yeah, there you it go. makes up for yeah. it. Just keep buying more. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that works. Definitely. We, um, we spoke about Rick. Obviously, you spent some time out in Manchester from where we've just come from yeah. to spend some time with Rick. Uh, first of all, what did you think of Manchester? Because, you know, that's home for us. Yeah, I, I said I, I really like the beans and eggs. Okay. Yeah. I'm a big beans and egg guy. So, okay. I mean, that stuck with me. I miss it. Like, when I wake up in the morning, I just want those, like, I don't know if it's like the tomato beans and they just go so well with the eggs okay. at the hotel. See, that's, that's so different to a lot, <laughs> of the, a lot of the other Americans that we speak to about it. Like that, that's what I took beans. away. Yeah. What are you smirking at? <laughs> Nothing. <Yeah. laughs> Obviously it's something. I'm, I'm good. It's, it's just nice. You know, this is why it's good to visit these foreign lands. You get to learn so much. Like we just take beans and eggs and bacon for yeah, granted. That's true. Yeah. Poor, well, no, I mean, Grant I could here. He's never I, experienced I, this culinary <laughs> delight before. I could. I, we beans are a thing here. You just don't go to a breakfast buffet and see beans. Okay. So it's like, but where are they? They're in a Mexican restaurant. Ah, yeah, but that's Mexican beans. That's not baked beans. We, I mean, you get baked beans at the store. Like we just, I just don't ever eat beans though. It just doesn't happen. Like they're there. You can go get them. It's not like they're like this thing that no one eats, but. I just feel like in the UK there was that tomato sauce on the beans mm. and the eggs and it just came together and then a bite of the uh, the uh, hash brown. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice so that talking. all came together. But um, the UK in general, I I really like it. Yeah. I definitely like it in moderation because um, I do like sunshine <laughs> and palm trees <laughs> and blue sky. Yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, I think the the rain and the the gloominess makes me get ready. Like it makes me want to go back home a little bit. But um, 
I think it's a cool place. Like I had a great time. Wallace C was unbelievable. I played there with Rick. Um, had a lot of funny stories. <laughs> yeah. Um, crazy stories, but yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't like the airport. No, we, no, we, no. Were, we were having a chat just before and uh, you were telling us that you had uh, you had some bad some bad memories from the airport, in particular your luggage. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I feel like I should tell the story. Yeah, I, I think I, so. I, I think, yeah. I think this I think is one of the crazier stories I've, I've had. So basically what it what happened was my clubs never made it to the UK. Mm. Um, and when they did make it, I had it scheduled for delivery to our hotel at Worsley Park, which you guys have probably seen that course. If yep. you're watching this, it's one of the courses we filmed at. Uh, and yeah, they made it a couple days late. So they, they never got actually loaded on in the US. So it, it took a couple days for them to finally make it to Manchester. And they make it and they're scheduled for delivery. And on my air tag, I have an air tag in my bag. So I can see my clubs that are sitting at the airport. I can see them there. And I go to the airport over a four day span to try and get them four times because they never got delivered. And I went four times and walked to exactly where my air tag was pinging. It was on the other side of this wall. And I kept telling the people at the airport, <laughs> this is where my golf clubs are. How do I get on the other side of this wall? And they every time told me we cannot go in there. Sorry, sir. That's not how it works here. Yeah. There you go. That's the perfect one. answer. You must work. Did you work at the airport? I, I trained them. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you're like, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what happened every single time. Um, just could not get my golf clubs on that other side of that wall. So four days go by and I don't have my, my clothes and I don't have my golf clubs. And the fifth day, I believe it was, yeah, it was the fifth day, my clubs or no, no. On the fifth day, my luggage with all of my clothes moves. My clubs don't move. My clubs are still there. Mm. But my clothes, they get delivered to the hotel that we were staying at. Hope you guys are following me here. <laughs> so the hotel we were staying at is Worsley Park. And I see on the air tag it moves finally from the airport. Wow. Our luggage finally moves from the airport to the hotel. So I'm like, oh my goodness, finally. I'm going to get my clothes. clothes. I'm going to be able to smell okay. I'm wearing Rick's old clothes from when he was a little kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, but we go to the hotel to go get my luggage, my clothes, and the air tag somehow moved when we show up. Because I show up to the front desk. I'm like, my luggage is here. I saw it. It pinged here. And when we get there, they say, there's nothing. So I see that my luggage moves 15 minutes away. And this is Rick and I in the car with my videographer, Skylar, and it's 10 o'clock at night. So we drive to where my air tag is 15 minutes away. So it's me, Rick, and Skylar. And Rick's like, come on, let's go get him. Yeah. Like we're on like a hunt let's to go do get it. Him. So now yeah. it's, it becomes a little bit like eerie because I'm thinking, Rick is thinking, and Skylar's thinking, you know, someone could have stolen my golf clubs. So we are, we're on like, we're on a mission now and we're all like kind of giggly. You know that like feeling you get when you're like, yeah, dang, yeah. someone could have actually stole. stole yeah, this is happening. Yeah, it could have happened. It's yeah. a chase. The hunt is on there. Now, yeah. now the chase is on. So we're like kind of a little giggly. We're like, oh man, this is wild. Like mm. we are chasing into this random area near your house, apparently where my golf clubs are. And so we pull up, it's about 11 at night and we pull up and my air tag is pinging in this van, in this little alleyway. So my luggage with my clothes is pinging in this van. Now my golf clubs are still at the airport. Um, we go up to the van and I'm like, literally, I'm like scared because I'm thinking they stole my luggage this yeah. whole time. So I'm scared to walk up and look in this van. I'm scared, like really, really frightened. Um, so instead of going to that van because it looked a little sketchy, uh, we called the cops and we waited for three hours for the cops. Stake out. Three hours we waited for the cops. Wow. Not a single thing. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. No. And we were like, I think the emergency list was like someone getting shot, someone, you know, probably heart attack, and then us like down here. Yeah. So we're like stolen luggage. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't care. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we sit there for three hours, nothing. And now by this time, we're like, what is happening? And we're sitting there, and it's now like 1 a.m., and these two guys pull up on us. In very nice cars. And I look over at Rick and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, Rick, those, those cars look so nice. Like, wow. What, a, you know, it's crazy. It's one yeah. thirty in the morning too. And they both pull up and they're following each other. And it's a BMW and a brand new Mercedes. So like these are brand new and Rick looks at me and he's like, you know, that they're probably, that's, you know, they're probably doing something maybe bad to yeah. have those cars. And I'm like, oh, okay. And like, it's, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not putting it together that it's one thirty in the morning. Mm. Um, and they walk up to the car <laughs> and me, Rick and Skylar are sitting in the car and this guy hops out of his Mercedes and walks right up to me. I just want to say he was very scary looking and he had his hand on his pocket and he looks me in the face and says, what are you doing here? <clears throat> and I thought I saw the ghost and I was almost pale in the face <laughs> and I looked at him and almost threw up and I was like, I'm just here. Yeah. And I don't even know. I, don't, I think I blacked out. I don't remember what I said. And Rick came in and said, we're good, mate. That's all he said. We're good. Like, we don't need anything. We're good. So yeah. I don't know if he wanted, he thought we were waiting for something yeah. that he was selling. Yeah. Um, and so he like backs away slowly and looks at me with his hand here. And now after this happens, so we're next to my luggage at this van. Yeah, yeah. I am thinking I'm 100% in my mind thinking that those guys are running an operation of stealing luggage. <laughs> Yeah, because they are next to me at this van where my luggage is pinging and I thought I was going to die and they were scary. Um, <laughs> so after that happens, we immediately call the emergency number. Me, Rick and Skylar, we call the emergency number and we start to pull out and they start following us. No oh, joke. No. These two guys in this Mercedes and this BMW start following us. And I I, was, I thought that was it. I thought yeah. Rick Shields and, and Grant were <laughs> this done. This is it. And, and uh, they followed us and they eventually drove away and they, they, they drove really close to each other, yeah. like really close on each other's bumper. Like it was really weird how they worked together. Like they were <laughs> quick and like turning together. They were in like, what do you call that? Synchron mm, yeah, synchronous. Were, yes. too, yeah. Um, so we now call that emergency number because we're like, OK, that is really bad. Whoever they are need to, like the cops need to yeah, come yeah. after them because they're scary people. Um, and I still need my luggage. That's just that's just what it's like around my house, <laughs> and that's right near Pete's house. So that, that's our neighborhood watch. Yeah, um, hopefully y'all are still following along with this story because it was one of the craziest nights. But Rick and I yeah. got to spend a good four hours at night just sitting in the car and talking together, so that was fun. I'm um, talking about YouTube, but now we're actually scared because now that just happened. Our, we probably all got very scared, so we call the cops, and now we're like, "Hey, like, you know, we we need help now," because I think they're running an operation and they yeah. want to, they want us to stay away from that air tech. Like this, this is going, this is going through my head. Like I think they are trying to guard that bus. Uh, and of course the guy that answers the phone on the emergency number is a fan of Rick. Of course it's like, Oh is, Rick, yeah. how are you? Like I'm a huge fan. I'm like, <laughs> dude, like, this is not the time to talk about YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Like, can we just like, can we uh, move can on we move with this? Along? And so, yeah, I mean we wait another, now it's like one 30 in the morning. Like, I think it's almost like 2 a.m. by the time we finally are give up mm. and the cops finally call Rick at like 2 a.m. And I guess they went to that van to where my air tag was pinging and they never found my clubs in there. And they went in and asked the guy that lived at the house to open up his van. He was a doctor. And apparently my clubs were not even in there. Oh, wow. But I had to find my like air tag and I was like walking yeah, and it was, it was showing it like right in this area now it could have been on the other side of this wall this is the whole thing it could have been on the other side of this wall but either way it was in that vicinity yeah it was right there so i could have been mistaken this whole time but it was there my yeah. air tag it's not lying the air tag um and the next day rick gets a call that night the cops went no no baggage no luggage so the next day we're at wallace C playing and i'm looking on my air tag and they somehow go back to the airport and I'm like, oh my goodness, like how did they just go back to the airport? I thought they were gone. Yeah. Like I, I completely said to myself, those guys are running a, 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 they're stealing baggage. This is their living. They're yeah. two like gangsters and they're running this yeah. operation of stealing luggage. Someone That's in what, Manchester is going to be walking around in Grant Horvath. Yes, and Prima. I'm like, <laughs> Prima. why would you steal my clothes? Yeah. Like I had nothing in there that you could have really made money off. Yeah. We, we don't have Prima. Yeah, in uh, in the UK. Well, maybe it's worth something. Like it could be. It's that, worth yeah. a lot over there. It's actually yeah. very rare in Manchester. Get so some primo joggers. All the all the local uh, yobbos around my estate <laughs> now are all primo up to the max. <laughs> but that's what was going through my head. I completely that night when I went to bed and laid down, I said, 
my luggage is gone. Forever. Yeah. And I, I convinced, I told myself that I said, I'm okay. Like everything's going to be okay. Primo's amazing. They're going to hook me up. We're good. And the next day we're playing wall city. Once again, I see the luggage go back to the airport and so Rick calls his driver up and Dave goes and gets my luggage from the airport. Finally, because it was at a loading station right? instead of, actually at behind the airport <laughs> yeah it would be behind, behind that wall yeah. it was actually at a loading station so we went but my golf clubs are still there so we never got my golf clubs we get my luggage back and this whole time like i find out after that obviously those guys were just some scary guys oh, that yeah. probably were running some type of operation they were doing something yeah they, they might, were doing something you know what they might have just been like just guys out for a drive Pete. Wondering what uh, some dodgy. I promise you, when I looked into that guy, like I looked him in the eyes, he had his hand here when he asked me what we were doing, and he kept reaching for his pocket. And I thought he was gonna. I thought he had a gun or a knife. He might just been ready to take a selfie. (laughs) (laughs) Could you imagine? Oh oh my God, Grant! I love your stuff. You know what the funniest thing is too? When those guys pulled up, I looked over at Rick when those two cars pulled up, and I said, "Maybe they're losing. Maybe they lost their luggage too." Yeah. And he started laughing. Like we both started laughing so hard. I was like, maybe those two guys lost their luggage. Yeah, very, everyone's very, descending on this. Yeah, everyone's air laughter. tag is pegging here. Like, they need their luggage too. Okay. Some very nervous laughter going on there. Uh, well, welcome to Manchester. Yeah. But, yeah, that's my long story. Hopefully, that made sense. It was a crazy night. That's mad. But I, I had a great time in the UK. Good. Rick was an amazing host. Mm. He is like, I mean, over there, he's like Tiger. He just shows up and they, like, we got on every course. Yeah. And he just, he was awesome. So we had a good time. Um, but I definitely, I definitely like, I like Florida. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be home. Yeah. It's good to be back where all things make sense. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, how'd you like Wallace, by the way? Oh my gosh. What a place. You like. know what really struck me was on the 11th hole at Wallace. Or no, no, it was the second hole. It yeah. was the second hole at Wallace. There's a plaque and yeah, it's yeah. like old Tom Morris. Yeah. Or something. Uh, not maybe not. St- Stableford, the Stableford. Stableford. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That just like made me think for a second. That plaque in that golf course is literally older than America. Yeah. Like I was standing there and I'm like, this spot is just older than America itself. Like that's just, it's just crazy. Everything, yeah. the buildings over there are just older. Everything's older. Yeah. That's also mm. a main takeaway from it. But it's really like good quality, a lot of the builds. Um, but. It's all, it's all we've got to cling on to nowadays. What? You know, generally the economy's in ruin. Uh, you know, the weather is slowly eating away. Uh, the coast is eroding through the gentle creep of global warming. Um, it's just a country in decay. But the one thing we have, history. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we can look back on rather than like looking to. forward into our dark, shadowy future. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you got a talent for that. Yeah, Pete. I like. You I, really have a talent I, for making, setting the scene, and being a commentator. Yeah, I see you uh, commentating one day. God, can you imagine my real depressive commentary. No, I think <laughs> I, I, I'm calling it right now. I think you'll be commentating like a major. Ooh, or something. Oh, maybe I could take um, Paul McGinley's job as the really depressing yeah, commentator. The one who's just like negative I think you could take like time. Faraday's job. Yeah, I think you could really. Oh, he's a bit too chirpy, isn't he? He's a bit too happy. He's a bit too funny. But you're as well. very witty. Like you're, you're quick. So mm. you got the. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I'm well, not so sure. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe in. I don't maybe, know. Yeah, maybe in let's, a few let's years. Let's stick with YouTube for I a mean, little bit. I need I'm, a job for a little bit. I mean, longer, I, mean so. I mean, this is the thing. Like, why, why would I, why would I sacrifice YouTube to go work on TV? Everyone's watching YouTube. Oh, that's true. Ooh. You could be a YouTube commentator. But you can be a commentator for big events. This is true. Okay, yeah, I like that. So I could go yeah. I could go over to Legacy Media, kind of on the big events, mm-hmm. and then just, just come, come back. Come back home. Yeah. This is this this would be like you coming back to Florida, Grant. I just love just come back to YouTube. Yeah. Come back home. <laughs> YouTube could wrap you know. me in its warm embrace. Yeah, yeah. Um producer Kieran. Yeah. I mean, but, well, we are we are just over an hour, so no, keep it going. I mean, people Thanks, love coach. seven hour long YouTube videos yeah. now, so we're good. There's simply not enough hours in the day to fill with YouTube videos right now. Well, I, I, the only last thing was just to go back on the points of like the Europe and the USA stuff. Obviously, 2025 is Beth Page, and you've done a video there recently. Yeah. Um, how do you think about holding up for like a right top course? Um, yeah. You know, how, how do, you, do you think that the Americans would be more at an advantage there, sort of thing like that? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I can touch on both of that. I mean, Beth Page was amazing. I think when Eric, Eric Anders Lang, and mm-hmm. he's an awesome guy. And when he said that it was like his top three favorite courses and he's played probably more courses than mm. anyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was like, it started to make me like it more. Yeah. So now it's like, yeah, it's in my top three. And maybe that was because of Eric, <laughs> but um, now I believe it's in my top three. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was unbelievable. Um, we stayed, we actually, so at Bethpage, you have to, to play there. It's like this system that they've had for a long time. You actually like sleep over night in the parking lot to get in line for a tea time. No way. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's a public course. Isn't it's it? a public yeah, course, yeah, yeah. but to get a tea time there, it's like really difficult because mm. they like book out. But the first, I believe it's like 20 to 50 tea times are, are based on this, this, this list of like the order that you show up. So long story short, I, I, uh, I fly out to New York and Eric has that's his tour bus mm. and they, they got there the day before at like probably 8 PM. So they're up towards the front and I got like one hour of sleep. I'm not even kidding you. One hour of sleep at the hotel. It was I don't even know why we got a hotel and, <laughs> and we then had to go meet them at 4 a.m. So I went to the tour bus at 4 a.m. and we were like third in line to tee off at Beth page. And so we got out there and yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. Um, I thought the course was great. It was so difficult. I also wasn't swinging great. Um, but yeah, I think for the Ryder cup, I mean, <laughs> I don't really know how to, I, I don't know how that would set for like everyone. I don't know how it would be for everyone's game. I can't say like Victor Hovland's going to be great on this yeah. hole and like mm. Rory's going to be great on this hole, but I don't know if it really sets up. It's definitely a long course, very long. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Cause like the, the whole thing, not the whole thing, but one of the main kind of takeaways from Beth Page every single time is an event there. It's always a major because they can make it really hard. It's the rough. So yeah. a US ride a cup generally what they've done in the last kind of few events is shave all the rough down so it's kind of like beth page it's going to almost take the teeth away from it a little bit you'd expect that's true and i i, I mean but if you could still take the teeth away from beth page and play the back tees and it's still hard mm. like it's that long and that difficult right, it is okay. really really difficult and i played some like i was three over through the first five holes and I thought I was on track to shoot 85 and I somehow shot a 75 because yeah. I came in and started heating up and yeah, played pretty nice. solid. Um, it is so difficult. It okay. is so difficult. I, I don't think you have to worry about the diff, like the difficulty okay. and I don't think anybody should be playing that course unless they're a very solid golfer. I right. think you're like almost wasting time because I think it was that difficult yeah. and like you get that sign before you show yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it was amazing. That's cool. Awesome. It, it, it's definitely on the list. To, definitely on the list to play. But I've not really played much around kind of New York, to be honest. Yeah, you just can't steal my thumbnail if you. <laughs> well, yeah. It's a good thumbnail. Yeah, I mean, you just can't. You can't it's, pose it's, in front. Yeah, of the, it's okay. The warning it's, not, it's not bad. It's not, it's not a bad thumbnail. Okay. It's sure. okay. Make it's sure okay. it's you on the side, guy. <laughs> Beth Page. You you were going from like the left side, so we'll just like flip it, and he can point from the right. Go from the then, right. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's like different. That. Yeah, it's very different. There you go. All right. I mean, <laughs> respect. Or, may, or maybe we'll like make it bigger, make it tall, make it higher, and I can stand underneath it. Yeah, there you go. So like the side, it's like on a billboard. Yep. And then in the background, we can have like a bit of a course. Yeah. Like, right, okay, you're like you it. sit up on the railing, and it's between we'll your legs. It work. Here. There you go. Yeah. You're just, yeah. Or I can be the railing. <laughs> you can be the sign. Just imagine we'll that. write it on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like no, you, you buy have... the merch. There's actually <laughs> yeah. merch in there. It's it's like the warning, you know, there experts you only. You wear the t-shirt and said, I got my t-shirt. There you go. There we go. So, oh my God. I defeated. We've done page. it. We don't even have to play in Florida anymore. Filming it's, podcasts it's good, it's and creating content all at once. It's just, ugh. It's like, it's like a little this round is how, table uh, meeting. If anyone wants to know how YouTube videos are created. This is how, this is how it goes. This is basically how it's done. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Love that. Love it. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's kind yeah. of pretty much it. Kieran, yeah. pr- 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 uh, producer Kieran. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, we've pretty much nailed everything here. Um, oh. that was probably wow. One thing. If we've got, have we got time? Uh, we have got a bit of time. I need the loo. So you guys can chat. You need the what? The toilet. Oh. What would so, you call that? The loo. Oh. <laughs> you you actually bailing in the middle no, of well, a podcast. Unless you want to wait for me toilet. to come back. I can't, this has never happened before. 
in almost a I year. Mean, he's got to really use the loo. In yeah. almost a year. I've never heard that saying in my whole life. The loo. We are now, having, am I uncultured for what? not knowing the loo? No, no, no. Okay. I think by looks of it, you don't want to know the loo after Jacob's done with it. <laughs> oh, I am. Oh, oh, was white oh, using the oh, loo. Oh, he's almost just decked it as well. Um, the yeah, loo this almost is, used him. Yeah, this is new. Like, this has never happened before. How, how odd. So this is like podcast after dark now. I mean, it's getting pretty late. Yeah, what time is it? It's uh, 9.30. Uh, what, time, what time are we playing tomorrow? Uh, I don't think we're in the we're afternoon. afternoon, aren't we? Yeah, I think we're Oh, right. So we're going to have a bit of a lion. What time are we in the afternoon? Um, it's probably midday and after. I mean, okay. you, you're you coaching oh, yeah. Pedro Dominguez, aren't you, sir? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. if I'm going to have to text him. That was going to be my last one. Is that, like, as a little pre thing, you guys are going to be playing match and scramble. Oh, yeah, that's good. You should probably uh, talk about the videos for the week. Uh, yeah, we probably right, should have okay. touched on I mean, what, what we're actually doing here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, so I think we mentioned this at the beginning. That's so, probably not yeah, the best. Thanks, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, so we're doing basically want to get a scramble done. So trying to break 59. Uh, the course we're playing at, as long as we can keep it in the fairway, I mm-hmm. believe it's a potential. Uh, then we did a couple of one on one matches. Okay. Um, obviously, one for mine, one for yours. And then probably that might be us for three days i think there's a couple of chances to play some extra golf but we'll see yeah we'll see what that takes us. yeah we might do that but um uh, yeah the scrambles are always fun yeah. and i think at the course we're playing we're gonna have a really good chance of shooting 59 oh, i love that I think we've, we've we've not done it yet we've recorded a few of these videos we've not managed to do it yet never done 59 two-man scramble uh we've done 58 before with a two-man scramble yeah yeah with who uh with matt fryer admittedly i did go nuclear so it was mostly me just absolutely dominating. Wow. Matt, if you're listening, you can back me up. No, uh, Matt has not made it this far in the podcast. <laughs> no, I no, he definitely hasn't. He clicked off after the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's been heavily skipping. What do you think 1v1? Who do you think is going to Grant. No, no. That's, no, that's not. I would not say that. I would say it's whoever has you know a better day. I feel like if Pete gets hot with the putter, I've seen you get really hot on some videos. I think, I mean, it could be really close. Now, stroke play, I do feel confident in stroke play. I think that one really, but like match play, that would be scary. I think my only chance, because my putter, it's going to run hot or it's going to run cold. I have no say. Like, it, it's just what turns up. Yeah. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen. My driving has been awesome at the moment. Yeah. It's one thing which I'm actually like, you know what? That's actually that's been really the good. worst thing you could have done though is actually said that out loud because <laughs> now tomorrow will be the worst driving day of your life. But at the same time, I am that confident because it has been that good. Yeah, like I, I I'm thinking. Are you hit, hitting a fade? Uh, I'm hitting a draw. Wow, exactly, and that never that's happens. Not. Do you have the jumbo grips on your driver? Yeah, I do. Mm. He has them on irons, wedges. You like them really? Like so a lot? what I try and do with all my clubs is I try and make them as unusable <laughs> as possible. So then when I can hit good shots, I'm like, you know what? I've, I've pretty much just completed golf. <laughs> like if my club set up, you'll have to have a look at my irons as well. Mason from Buster Jack uses the big grips. Yeah. The Jumbo Max. Jumbo Max, yeah, yeah. They feel really good. I hate to admit it, but they feel really good when, well, you, when you're holding that thick grip. Starting a revolution. Yeah. People have been using thin grips for far too long, <laughs> and it's time everybody changed. Give it the time. Seriously. When Bryce I'm, uses it too, obviously. Yeah, yeah. When I'm in charge, everyone's going to be using the thick ropes. When me and my AI computer take over, we're going to make sure that a prerequisite of playing golf is use thick grips. Oh, boy. All the yeah. grips are available yeah. from <laughs> your favorite retailer. <laughs> um, so we will be filming those. We'll be releasing them at some point in the, in the next few weeks. Ne- next month, maybe. Next month? Yeah. Well, actually, to be fair, we could release this podcast the week they come out. So mm, this is true. Maybe it's tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll have to have a, a word with our exec producer um, <laughs> to figure out when that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, so, mate, thanks for thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thanks you. for having me. Um, thanks for. Is this working? Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you guys for having me. No, no. And, and thanks for driving into, um, you know, this really <laughs> rough area and risking <laughs> life and limb. You know what? After this Manchester story, I'm beginning to think that you kind of get off on this. Maybe, maybe this is your thing. This is where you get your excitement. Yeah. Your adrenaline rush. Yeah. Close to death experience. No, I don't, I'd rather not come to this area that we're at currently. I'm not going to say where it is, but um, 
<laughs> yeah, it's definitely scary going to get in my car right now. Okay. And, uh, it's literally just, no, out, I'm just, I'm just, it's it's literally just outside no, of it's, it's not that door. bad. It's not that bad. I'm just joking. Mm -hmm. So we will get filming, get a playing tomorrow. Um, Jacob, thank you for being no, on thank you, most of the podcast. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Kieran, uh, thank you for playing the role of exec producer. I think you did a fantastic job. Good job, Kieran. Well done, Kieran. You really, I mean, you good. stepped up. You're doing two jobs now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just kill it. Just kill it in every avenue. God, it's just unbelievable. What you can you not do? What must it be like to wake up and be that multi talented? No. You must just look in the mirror every morning and just think, God, how did I get so lucky? <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway right guys thank you so much for watching um if you haven't subscribed already make sure you go check out grant on all his social media his youtube channel um his multi-platform network empire that he's building <laughs> and we will see you next time or speak to you next time or generally maybe never see you again so there's that Cheers. <laughs> Eleven. Now you could be a, the eleventh ranked podcast by the time. We there you go. Love that. This is going to move us up to nine. We're going to break into the top ten. I think so. Love that. <laughs>